Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to part 2 of customizing the HTML5 video element controls interface. In this video we're going to more intelligently initialize the video player programming so that our HTML5 markup stays slim and clean. We're going to use JavaScript to add event listeners and initialize all the object variables needed for the entire video player script. In this part two, we'll also apply the HTML5 range slider input as the custom seek bar for our video player. That allows the user to seek through the video. They can just grab a slider and move it anywhere they want. So we'll focus on making the player controls sexy in the later videos in this series. First, we just want to make sure we get working controls programmed. And after that, we'll use CSS to make it all pretty. We're going to start with the script that we left off with in video one. And we're going to adjust it a little to make our HTML markup a little bit cleaner. We can register this click event in JavaScript rather than it being in our HTML. So I'm going to show you how to clean up your HTML so you can program in a more modern sort of way. Get in the chopper. And we're also going to have all of our, like the, these width and height attributes, those can be assigned in CSS. So we're going to clean this whole thing up eventually, but I just put it the way I did in the beginning so you can see how... Okay, first things first. Let's go ahead and collapse the code within our play pause function. And right above that function, we're going to initialize three variables that our script is going to require. The first one is named vid. The second one, I'm going to name play button. Third one, I'll name seek bar. And in later videos, we're going to be adding a few more variables to initialize right there. Now go down a few lines and under that line you're going to type in window.onload is equal to the initialize function that we're going to set up. So let's name it initialize player semicolon. And what this line means is when the window, when all of the uh, HTML is loaded into the user's window, this function initialize player is going to fire off because we're using the onload event of the window. So basically window.onload is a way to start referencing all of these HTML elements only after the page fully loads because if you try to access and work with all of these HTML elements by their ID name in your JavaScript before they even load to the window, you're going to have JavaScript errors. Your scripts won't even run. So that's why we use the window.onload event. We can make sure that all of the HTML is loaded before we start referencing these elements. So right above the window.onload line, let's type in function and you can just copy and paste this function initialize player open close parentheses opening curly brace go down and closing curly brace. Now within this initialize player function we can start grabbing the object references that we need. So let's take this first variable and we're going to say vid is equal to document dot get element by ID and let's grab the ID of the video player right there and put it between double quotes or single quotes my video close your parenthesis and put a semicolon now you have an object reference for the my video video tag and we also want an object reference for this play pause button and we're going to add a seek bar so let's just copy this line right here and paste it in one more time and then you can grab the ID for this play pause button and put it right there and copy this control C and put it right there. So now you have an object reference for the play pause button. That means we can remove these parameters, these arguments that we're sending through our play pause function. Remember in the first video, we sent two parameters through the play pause function. We don't even need those anymore. You can remove that there and remove it there as well. Actually, let's go ahead and remove that seek bar variable. We're not going to in initialize the seek bar variable until we put the actual element in place. Okay, so now that we remove those two arguments that we were sending through, this function can change the code inside of it. We don't need to get the video object reference there because we already have vid set up right here as an object reference. So we can just code against it in all of our functions. So function play pause is we just have to change this button now to play button right there and right there now everything else everything should work exactly the way it did before and you want to test it now to make sure it does beautiful okay I developed PHP I made a video uh, 
November 8th, 2011, that discussed a better way to add event listeners to your HTML. So instead of having the on click event right here, how we have it, we can register the click event for this element using JavaScript. And it's the recommended way to add event listeners to your HTML. That way your HTML stays slim and clean. So if you want to go to develop PHP, you can check out this whole video tutorial that discusses it. But really, we just want to grab a little bit of the code. So basically, I just want this one line. Now I'm going to pop that line into my initialize player. And you can also give yourself a comment here that says set object references. And then under that, make another comment that says add event listeners and then pop in that line of code so we can change this line up a little bit to say and what we want to do is remove this on click reference here and place it up here so let's take the name of this play pause function control C and let's put it right there and we want the click event so that's good and we want that to be false so now we can go down here in our HTML and clean it up remove that and let's make sure we use the play button reference, the object reference right here, instead of that document.getElementById stuff. Because we already got an object reference for it, so we can just say play button dot add event listener, and you put the event that you want to listen for, which could be mouse over, mouse out, double click, click, and then the function that you want to fire off on that event. So this is how we're going to be accessing all of the little components and, and elements in our player and this is how we're going to be adding all of the events and we're also going to go even further by removing any attributes in any elements in our script that could be applied or registered through CSS instead so we'll make the width and the height for this video element eventually in our CSS instead of having it down here does that make sense that way you'll have nice slim clean HTML buddy now we gotta make sure this still works so let's test that button and it works just fine. Let's also check that in Internet Explorer. Very nice. And you guys have to keep in mind that a lot of the HTML5 technologies and some of the JavaScript even is really recommended that we wait till 2014 for all of these things to standardize before we expect these things to work in all different browsers the same. So you gotta keep that in the back of your head when you're programming things with HTML5. So I'm jumping the gun a little bit and really you shouldn't use these technologies and depend on them fully until 2014. If you are going to use them now, you definitely want to have fallback content. If you don't know what fallback content is for HTML5 elements, you definitely want to look into fallback content. Some people will use a flash video player as fallback content for their new HTML5 video player. Alright, enough yammering on, let's put in some code. So right under the button, we're going to add a new control. And that's going to be an input range slider. So you're using the type range. And I gave it an ID of seek slider. And I also have a nice video tutorial on showing how to program the uh, input range. So I'm not going to go over all of these attributes in depth again. And you'll notice that the range slider does not work in Firefox. I'm not sure why Firefox is behind the curve on that one a little bit. Usually they're ahead of the curve in Firefox, but in this instance, Firefox is behind the curve. You can depend on it to work in Internet Explorer 10 and Chrome browser, and possibly some other less used browsers. But in Firefox, it's not working yet. So for Firefox, you might want to put a different type of element there, or just use the default controls for Firefox users. But come 2014, I'm sure Firefox will be right along with everybody else. Okay, so now let's initialize this seek slider. So let's go up here and add it as a variable name here. And then we can copy this line, duplicate it right under it, control C on that seek slider, put it right there and put it right there. Now you have an object reference for the seek slider element down here, which is your range input. Now we also want to add an event listener for that. So we can go ahead and copy this line, put it right there. And make sure we copy this and put it here. So seek slider is going to get the event of change. So anytime this input slider is changed, that means somebody's sliding the knob. We're going to fire off a function called vid seek. Okay? 
Now we don't really have to see this play pause function or the code within it, so let's collapse that. And right below it, let's type another function in. Name it vidseek. Open close parentheses and put in your curly braces. Now the first variable within this function is a number that we have to get by performing a specific calculation according to the duration of the video. So let's name this variable seek2. It's going to represent a number. We're going to make that equal to our vid dot duration. So you can use the duration property to find out how long the video is. Then we're going to multiply that by the seek slider dot value divided by 100. And that helps you get the calculation that you need. Now the next thing in this function is we're going to access the video's current time. That's a property as well that you can access whenever you need to. And we're going to set it to seek2, which is the number that we acquired through this calculation right here. So basically you're just, wherever the user drags the slider, you're taking that value in the slider and you're making the video seek to that position. Does that make sense? Okay, let's test it out. Run this in your favorite browser that you're testing with, either Chrome or Internet Explorer 10. See, our pause still works. And we're going to be changing the style of this play pause button to make it more graphical. And we're also going to change the style of this slider. But what I want to do is grab the slider now and move it to... See how I'm moving it through the video? From the beginning to the end. Now you'll notice the slider isn't following along the video as it's playing. And we'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so to update the seek bar as the video is playing, you want to make the seek bar knob follow the video so we're going to add another event listener and that's going to be for vid so you can put vid that add event listener and the event is going to be time update and the function that we want to fire off is called seek time update now under vid seek we can just type in function copy this name of that function right there put it in here open close parentheses curly brace and curly brace so what I'm going to do is make a variable called nt, short for new time. And that's going to be equal to the vid.currentTime. And we're going to multiply that by the number that we get when we divide 100 by the vid.duration. So 100 divided by vid.duration gets multiplied with vid.currentTime to give you new time. And then we can just say seek slider dot value. And here is where you're updating the position of that knob in the seek slider is equal to new time. Okay, now run this in the browser that you're testing with. You can see how my seek bar is now following the video's position. And I can take it and drag it along. And you can make that bar as wide as you want. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and put a style attribute. And I'll make the width of that bar 250 pixels. And now you'll see it's a little bit longer than it was before, but it still operates the same. So you can make that any width that you want. Now, I don't want to have any CSS on my elements because we're trying to keep nice, clean HTML. In later videos, when we go to prettify everything, we're just going to put some CSS up here for this seek slider. Okay, so we'll leave this one at that. So now you have a pause play button that we're going to customize to make it nice and pretty later. And you also have a seek bar that lets you seek through the video. And you'll notice that Internet Explorer's range slider looks totally different. So we're definitely going to have to manage that with CSS. All right, so that shows you how to set up and initialize your player in such a way where you can access all of the objects that you want and add all of the event listeners to those elements through one initialize function that happens window on load. That way in your functions, you don't have to pass many arguments to the functions and it also cleans up your HTML nicely. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this part two. And now we're really cooking with gas the way we have our script set up. So the rest of the series will blast right through it. I'll see you in part three.